All right, so let's talk about how to kind of figure out what those coefficients are. And so we kind of have some steps for balancing an equation. But one thing I kind of want to tell you when it comes to these steps is, yes, there's steps and you might think do one, then two, then three, you kind of want to do that. But this is more of a process than a very systematic way. Like when we did empirical formulas, that was very much, you know, percents to grams, grams to moles, write the pseudo formula, divide by, you know, like it was very systematic. This is kind of like, do this, then try this, and you kind of have to kind of play like a balancing act to go back and forth to see and kind of get it to work out. So these are kind of like more like guidelines than very strict steps, okay? So let's talk about the steps. So step one for balancing our equations is that we want to balance all atoms except carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Or another way you can think about this is to balance the complex substances first. So balance your complex substances first. Second, we're going to balance all non-free elements. So a free element is an element by itself. So it's free from being combined with anything else. So um, we're gonna balance all non-free elements and then we'll balance the free elements. So anything that's by itself, we do it last. So after we do all the non-free elements, then we're gonna balance all of our free elements. And then once we do the free elements, anything by itself, Depending on what your coefficients are after this step, you may or may not do step four. So it depends on if you have fractions in your coefficients, we can't have fractions. So if we have fractions, then you have to do step four. So step four is to multiply by a factor to get rid of fractions. Okay? So that's step four. So if we have fractions, multiply by a factor to get rid of our fractions. All right, so let's do some practice because that's the best way to learn. So write a balanced equation for the combustion of butane. And so I told you what butane is, C4H10. And since we haven't talked about combustion, what it really is, I tell you what combustion is in this problem. So it is whatever the compound is that's being combusted. So in this case, it's butane. Plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide and water. And in this problem, I'm not worried about the states and all that. I'm really worried about what is the actual compounds reacting and their coefficients. All right, so the first thing that's being reacted is the compound, so I write the compound down. And you always wanna leave space in front so that you can write your coefficients. Plus, this will be your space. You don't have to do an underline. I'm gonna erase that so you don't get confused. Oxygen. Now we know the symbol for oxygen is O. But remember that we talked about the rule of seven, that there are seven elements that don't just exist just as an element by itself, that it's diatomic, okay? So we said those seven are going to exist in nature as two of them, two atoms, diatomic. So if it says oxygen, you better write O2 and not O, because if you write just O, you're not gonna be able to do this problem goes to carbon dioxide, so you have to be able to name, go from the name to the formula. So if you don't know how to go from the name to the formula, you'll have trouble, and then water. All right, so first let's figure out how much we have. So what elements do I have on the left? So I have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So I kind of do like a little bookkeeping. I have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Whatever elements you have here, you have to have the same ones here. That's the law of conservation of mass. So I have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. All right, how many carbons on this side? I have four carbons. I have 10 hydrogens. And I have two oxygens. Okay. Now on this side, I have one carbon, two hydrogens, and then I get oxygens from here and there. So let's add it up. I have two here. So I kind of write like a little two. And then I have how many here? I have one. 
So how I like to write it is I like to write two comma one and write a big three. So I know that I have three oxygens total on this side, but I get it from two from one thing, one from another. This reminds me that oxygen is in both compounds. So don't forget that. Because sometimes when you do really complex ones that have multiple products or reactants, it's helpful to remember that it's in more than one thing. So three, two from one, one from the other. All right, so let's do our rules. Now that I know what I have, I need to balance it. I need these numbers and those numbers to be the same because that's balancing. So the first rule was to do everything besides carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Well, that's all I have. So I skip rule number one because I don't have anything that's not carbon, hydrogen, or oxygen. Rule number two is to balance all non-free. So let's look at what is free. What element is by itself? Oxygen is by itself. So we do oxygen last, okay? Carbon and hydrogen are in compounds. So we can do carbon or hydrogen first. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna pick carbon because he's on top. So I have four carbons here and I, need, and I have one here. So what happens is I need to get this side higher. So that means the coefficient is gonna go on this side because I need more of them. So I have to figure out what number I put here so that I have the same amount. So if there's a one here, what number would I put here to get to four? A four. So if I put a four here, now I have four carbons. But I also messed up my oxygens. Instead of it being two, now I have eight. So instead of it being two here, now that number is an eight. So now I have a total of nine oxygens. Okay? So now my carbons are good. Now I do hydrogen. This side has 10, this side has two, so this side needs to go up. So my coefficient goes on the right side. So what number would I put here? You need 10. Some people would think, well, I'll put 10, but then it's 10 times two, which is 20. So you gotta kind of think through it. So what number would go here that would multiply by two to give me 10? Five. So I put a five here, five times two gives me 10, but now I messed up this oxygen. So instead of it being just one, now it's five. So then it's eight and five, and that gives me 13 total. All right, let's do the next one. So carbons are good, hydrogens are good, oxygens. I have 13 oxygens on this side. I only have two on this side. So I gotta put a number on this side. So I need this side to be 13, okay? So what number? When you think about it, you go, I don't know any whole numbers that that would work. Because if it's six, six times two is 12. If I do seven, seven times two is 14. So this is where we use a fraction. So whatever number you need it to be goes on top. I need 13, so 13 goes on top. And whatever the multiplier is, whatever this subscript is, is what goes on bottom. Okay, so 13 halves times two gives me 13. So 13 halves times two gives me 13. So now I'm balanced. Four carbons, 10 hydrogens, 13 oxygens. But I'm not done because I cannot have a fraction. You cannot leave your balanced equation with a fraction. So what you have to do now is you have to multiply the entire equation by whatever this subscript is in, I mean, your denominator in your fraction. So if the bottom thing is two, you're gonna multiply the entire everything by two. So two times one, gives you two C4s, H10s. 13 halves by two give you 13 O2s. Two times four gives you eight CO2s. Two times five gives you 10 H2Os. Then you just do one more little check. So carbon, four times two is eight. Carbon, one times eight is eight. So carbons are good. Hydrogen, 10 times two is 20. 10 times two is 20, so my hydrogens are good. Oxygen, 13 times two is 26, okay? Oxygen, eight times two is 16. 10 times one is 10. 10 and 16 is 26, which is what I had here. So then I know I'm done. And now I have my balanced equation. All right, on the next um, lecture, we're gonna try another practice problem.